jump right in and get started with today's show and tell webinar. To kick things off, what we're going to talk a little bit about is website design. Been a very big issue for our clients in 2014, uh, particularly with the growth of the mobile web and mobile job seekers. So what we're going to take a look at is a couple of the different ways we build websites. And as many of you know, and when we started Hilly Marketing Group 18 years ago, we had a very simple mission, and that's to make great marketing more affordable. Uh, today, we offer services in a variety of different flavors to fit companies of different sizes, different needs, and with different budgets. So one of the ways we do websites is custom website design, where we build everything from scratch. So Kelly, I'm going to turn it over to you, and we're going to take a look at a few of our custom website design projects. Yep, thank you, David. And as David said, I'm particularly excited um, this year about the custom sites that we've been doing. We've come a long way. Um, particularly, as David said, with the mobile and the mobile web and mobile job seekers. And it was very difficult to choose the selection, so narrow it down to just a few. But the first one we're going to take a look at is a and Search and ClinLab Staffing. This particular client was trying to come up with a website that encompassed all three of their divisions, Two of their divisions had old sites, individual sites, and we wanted to encompass everything in under one umbrella with an easy-to-navigate site. On the home page, each division has very clear boxes, and when you roll over each one of those boxes, information actually pops up that can then drill down further into the site, whether you're a client or a candidate of that particular division. On the home page, we also have a blog feed lower below that, that auto-populates as new blog posts are added. And you'll be seeing throughout all of these samples that dynamic content, blog posts, job posts, carried throughout the site are very, very popular, especially with SEO, and I know Brad's going to talk about that a little bit later. On to the next um, page, once you drill down into one of the um, Oh, sorry, once you drill down into one of the divisions, you can still access any of the pages of the divisions by a large drop-down menu at the top of the page, which we're displaying here as you roll over the services page. Again, blog content is then pulled in over on the right-hand side where little button says June 6, four tips on building trust as new IT executives. Another sample on this particular site is accordion menus. These are a great way to put a lot of content and a lot of information on a page without having the page scroll and have a unlimited text on it. This particular client selected to do that with their, with their general most frequently available positions. And again, it's sectioned out by each division, so it's very easy to find the information you're looking for. Moving on to the next site, we're going to take a look at Staff Masters. What we're showing you here is a screenshot and a grab of what is actually a very, very long infinite scroll page. Infinite scrolling pages are a movement in website design. It started from social media pages. People are very used to now scrolling through a lot of information, but we present it in a way that's very readable and very digestible. In a few minutes, we're actually going to be going to the live site to take a look at this. Staff Masters was looking to position themselves as a high-end quality staffing firm with high-volume industrial staffing. So we had a couple focuses we were looking to get to. We're focusing on their services as well as their expertise. The site features the infinite scroll page I just mentioned, and this also has a parallax effect. For those who are not familiar, a parallax effect is when background information or background images stay static while other information scrolls over the top of that. And we're going to be showing you several examples of how this looks. Um, this site is also built responsively, so it automatically adjusts to the screen size and the device that you are viewing it on, and that's a great solution for your mobile users. David, if you want to go to the next slide, this is a subpage of the Staff Master's site. So once you click into a section, we still have a long, tall page. At the bottom, we're pulling in some news. That's pulling in from their blog feed. That's dynamic content. And when we look at the actual live site, you'll see that we have some parallax effect happening in the banners. And as you scroll through the pages, the images actually have some movement to them. Moving on to our next sample. 
This is BOS staffing. This was another custom site that we worked on, and they were looking to expand beyond their Athens, Georgia base and into other markets in their area. They were looking for a very professional, clean look, a simple design with easy access for both employers and job seekers. So when you go to this site, you know exactly if you're an employer, you want to go here, a job seeker here. This design also has a great kind of movie screen effect or movie reel effect in the images, and as it adjusts, responsively, the two images on the side, you see more and more of the images as it adjusts towards for the larger screen. Again, not shown here, but on the actual live site, we have dynamic content from both the blog and the job board, posting blog posts and job postings to the home page. The Haley Marketing job board on this site, oh, there's, the, there's the look of the full home page, and the latest news is that blog posts and the featured jobs is actually pulling automatically from the most recent jobs that they've posted to their job board. With the Haley Marketing Job Board, this particular client is integrated with their TempWorks, which means that they have all the benefits of our job board, SEO optimized job postings, mobile optimization, but still have the, the candidates still have the ability to fill out the application and those, that applicant information goes directly into their TempWorks ATS. Those are some of the custom sites, and now we're going to give you a sneak peek at a site that we are actually currently in development on. We're hoping this is going to be live in the next couple weeks, but we wanted to give you an idea of another design that uses a lot of the functionality that I just discussed. This is a site for At Work Group, and At Work Group is a franchise, has a franchising opportunity as well as four divisions. This is a bold design. It uses a parallax effect throughout the entire home page of the site. It effectively introduces all of the divisions along the bottom, at work personnel, at work medical, et cetera, et cetera. And once we get into the site, you'll see it's got simple copy with clear calls to action. It's very short, very sweet copy, and you go right to the call to action. The nice part with this particular site as well is that each of the division pages also incorporate a long infinite scroll page with the short call to action copy. So David, that's it for the custom sites. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks Kelly. And, and, and as Kelly mentioned, we're going to be taking a live look at those in just a minute. Before we do, we're going to take a look also at a couple of other types of sites we design are new starter sites. Now, for those of you who may have worked with Haley Marketing in the past, you know that we offer three different levels of website design, a very entry-level value site, a, a mid-level starter site, and high levels are custom sites. Now, on the starter sites, uh, historically, it was a, a fairly elaborate process where we took a base design and we customized it fairly extensively for each client, and it was really like building a custom site, but just from a starting point that our client picked. Well, over the course of the last year, our technical team and our creative team got together and they really reinvented the, the process that we're able to use for building websites. They able, were able to come up with new designs that offered more, feature, more functionality, um, more uh, features built in, all new designs, everything's fully responsive so it's mobile optimized have different designs created for different types of staffing firms, and here's the best part. Uh, they added a ton of features in and didn't have to change the price one dime because they found better ways to build websites. So let's take a couple of looks at some of these new designs. So this particular site, like one of the earlier examples Kelly showed, BOS Staffing has very intuitive entry points for job seekers and employers. Uh, some simple copy, clear navigation, uh, even have an area where we're dynamically feeding in testimonials uh, from clients and candidates as well as content from the blog in this particular example. Now what you're looking at now is the base model for the site and then what you'll see next is how that base model turned into a finished site for OSCE Group where we changed just the, the coloring, the photos, and the navigation options to create a completely custom feeling site for our friends at OSCE. The next example of a starter, uh, this is another one of those tall home pages that, that Kelly talked about. We'll see an example of a finished site in just a minute where we have two types of 
navigation, uh, our traditional navigation at the top with our employer's job seeker search jobs pages, and then navigation right within the home page for clients, candidates, who we are, news and contact. And one of the reasons that we're doing a lot of these tall home pages and, and within the page navigation is because of mobile users. Uh, we, we know that page loads take longer on mobile devices than scrolling up and down on a page that's already loaded. So we're trying to design home pages that can substitute for a full website. So for if you're an employer, you can get the information you need right from the home page of this design without having to go further, which allows you to have a better mobile experience. And again, we'll take a look at this in just a minute. But this was the, the base design. And here's an example of how it was finished for a company that does IT staffing. And just again, by changing the, the style of the imagery, the style of the, the colors, the elements in the navigation, we're able to take our starter site and really make it a customized site for Footbridge. Our next example, oh, we're seeing a couple of companies that have taken the interest in having a tall home page a little bit further and saying, you know, we really are just need to create a single page website. So this particular design actually features the entire website in one page. And I'll show you a working model of this in just a moment, where everything is organized vertically within one page. And even when there's subpages, you'll see just below that pale blue bar where it says job seekers, we have jobs and benefits and assignment feedback. All of that content can swap in and out within this home page. Again, making it a, a very easy way for someone to come learn all about this staffing company and making it very efficient for somebody who's using the site on a mobile device. And taking that same design and, and again just changing the style of the, the navigation and the photography, we get a completely different look and feel for BG Staffing Group. And our last example of a starter site before we look at some of the live models is uh, this particular design which it's, it's really hard to, to tell from just this one screenshot, which is why I'll show you a working model in a minute. But it's a very tall homepage site with extremely simplified copy. And we're, we're finding, uh, from an SEO perspective, people like longer copy, but from a human perspective, shorter copy is becoming more and more critical. And the reason it's becoming more and more critical is because we're giving less and less time to everything we do, particularly when we're surfing the web. So if we don't have strong visuals, strong calls to action that gets you right away, you're not going to stick around the site. And, and one of the things that Brad and his team do is they monitor Google Analytics on nearly 500 staffing websites these days to try to figure out where do people enter sites? Where do they exit sites? What pages do they visit? And we look at a statistic called the bounce rate, which shows how fast somebody leaves the site after coming to figure out what can we do to create engagement faster so that they don't bounce away. And again, taking the same very simplified design and changing the colors and the pictures, we now have a completely different looking site um, based on the same starter site. All right, so now we're going to play around a little bit and we're going to take a look at some of these sites in action. Bear with me one second while we change this around. All right, so one of the sites that Kelly mentioned was Staff Masters. And you're seeing now their home page. We have uh, some slides that are changing to introduce their various services. We have calls to action right from the home page, but where you're using an effect that you see used in a lot of uh, content management systems like WordPress and other tools where the, the actual toolbars are closed until you put your mouse over them, then they open up to tell you what you can do. On this particular site, as I scroll down the page, you'll see that the main navigation moves up and then locks into place so that as I'm scrolling down the page, I've always got access to my navigation. Where we use the home page to introduce the range of services that staff masters can provide. Um, use colors to drive people to calls to action. And as Kelly mentioned earlier, some of that dynamic content, feeding in hot job information or the ability to search jobs from that home page. And then finally, scrolling down to even the contact form, which there was a contact available right up here at the top, but we know as people are scrolling down this page, they may want to contact you right from that home page. So at the bottom of the page has the ability to contact staff masters as you continue on to the bottom of the page. Now Kelly, I'll show an example here of 
it was on the, the ANA site, but large format drop-down navigation. And this is an example of that, where as I scroll over, you get a large bar that not only has the sub-navigation options, but also has additional copy to help sell Staff Master to someone who's just reading the menu. And if we go to take a look at their services, you'll see an example, and there's been a question about parallax. You're going to see an example here that as you scroll down the page, that's a little bit this is a very subtle parallax effect with the picture moving in the top. And you will see a, a more dynamic version of parallax when we get to, to the uh, at work example. And David, if I could just jump in oh, here, I'd sorry. just like to point out that um, as you're showing this on the screen, some of the functionality is lost because of uh, the, the interface. So if you really <laughs> want to see the true effect, it would help going to uh, the, the site individually by yourself after the call, and you can see some of these really cool uh, um, features. Thanks, guys. And if I forget what happens with GoToWebinar, that uh, everybody doesn't see things real time. All right, well, with that said, let's jump out and take a look at, maybe it will work a little better with the, the at work example. So this was the home page we saw uh, as part of, of the PowerPoint presentation. As we scroll down this page, and I'll try to move slowly, you'll see that it kind of alternates between the foreground and the background changing as we move to different sections of the site. So we have their personnel services division and a picture of a warehouse, and then moves in a picture of an office in this case a medical office, as the medical division comes into play. And then the picture changes, followed by the text changing for their helping hands division. And another picture of more professional office setting for their executive search group. And followed by a picture of an at-work building for the opportunity to be part of their franchising organization. And lastly, the dynamic content that is coming from their blog feed. This is a, now this one you can't go look at because it's not ready to be seen, but it should be live in just a few weeks to take a look at. And even within the division sections, we use the same effect. This is really intended for the mobile visitor who can go, if I'm interested in network personnel services, I can come to this page and I can simply scroll down this page to get all of the information I need as a job seeker or as an employer to learn about this particular division of the company. And Brett, while I'm pulling up the next one, there was a question that just came in with the short and sweet copy on the new sites, good for mobile, what happens with SEO? Well, there's a few interesting challenges here. So, uh, David, you pointed out that we generally try to design and, and write for the reader first and then look for ways to attract the search engine after that. Uh, the short and sweet copy does seem to keep people on the site longer. It gets them to more pages within your site. It increases the chances uh, that they're going to convert. Uh, so maybe they'll fill out an application or uh, fill out a contact form. So there's a big benefit in short and copy uh, from the user perspective. Uh, from the SEO perspective, however, we lose uh, some SEO value there. So when Google is indexing your site, it's looking at the copy on your site. If your copy is extremely short and small, there's less copy there, less opportunity for you to organically include keywords. Uh, so you may have a little um, negative impact on SEO. Uh, however, there are a few ways around this. Uh, you could create longer pages uh, that are accessible maybe through your sitemap that include uh, deeper content, uh, more thought out content, more SEO rich content. Uh, when you have short copy, it's, it's essential to have a blog or some way to continually add relevant um, content. In this example for at work, they have a latest news section where there's blog posts, there's content, there's more copy. So uh, there are ways around it and there's benefits to having very short copy on static pages and benefits to adding a longer copy that's uh, SEO rich in, in other areas. Great. Thanks, Brad. All right, we got a couple more samples to take a look at, and then we'll jump back into some things besides websites. Uh, I mentioned Footbridge. This is an example of one of our starter sites. The first two examples we looked at were custom. Uh, here we have some slides going by with an introduction to their services, but I talked earlier about how having two types of navigation, our traditional navigation across the top, and then navigation within the home page of the site. So I can quickly get at the essentials of the services Footbridge provides, their direct hire, their contract, information about the company. I can read the blog posts or I can go to a contact form, all within the home page.
Next example is that BG Staffing. This is a single page website. So we have multiple ways to, to actually navigate this page. Now we have menu bar at the top, just like a traditional website. And the reason we have it at the top is we wanted to keep navigation available so people would understand um, what they can do on the site. But we also have just a simple little arrow button at the bottom of the home page copy. And then if I click it, we'll switch sections. So I could go from about to divisions to contact and back just by using the main navigation. Here I'm not changing pages, I'm just moving up and down within this page, but if there is more detailed copy, like if I want to meet their CEO, uh, Alan Baker, I can click on that and open it up and there's Alan's profile. If I'm interested in going back to the, an overview of the organization, I can click on overview and now we're changing content all within the same web page. In this particular case, BG Staffing has a number of divisions which we introduce here and then we're linking to their other corporate websites. So this page, they did it as a one page site simply because it was a nice intro to everything the organization does, presented in a very attractive way um, without having to create a very large and expensive website. And the last one I want to show an example of was just using very short copy and calls to action. To, a site that um, we're working on. Um, this is a company that's got a great process for how they sell their recruiting services and had some very strong value proposition uh, messages that we wanted to tie into the site. So we have essentially a headline, a subheadline, and a call to action, and three buttons. Very short copy. As we scroll down the page, same thing, a headline, a subheadline, and a little introduction to their services with a call to action. So as you're thinking about your own website, think about how could we get to the essentials of the value we provide in as few words as possible. And as Brad said, we can create other longer pages for SEO purposes, but for your human reader, make it quick, make it easy, and then get them to do something next to take action. All right, and with that said, we're going to jump back into the presentation. So bear with me one second while we get switched back over to PowerPoint. And we're going to transition from websites to some of the other marketing we're doing, and specifically we're going to talk a little bit about the mobile. Now mobile really is a hybrid between what we've been doing in website design and some other things. But um, Brad, if you wouldn't mind sharing, what are we seeing on our client sites in terms of mobile traffic these days? Well, it's, it's interesting. So it depends on the type of staffing that you do. Uh, so high-level professional like accounting finance, mobile traffic is a little bit lower, um, whereas with light industrial, more people uh, are accessing the Internet through their mobile device. Uh, the percentages are much higher. On average, I would say about 15% of traffic now on the staffing and recruiting websites we track is mobile. Uh, that's increased a lot over the last year. Uh, if I looked at those stats last year, it was probably 12%, 10 to 12%. Um, and again, it varies by industry. So I've seen it as low as about 5 or 6% and as high as about 26, 28%. All right, thanks. So clearly it's a, it's a trend, um, particularly on the job seeker side. You're seeing it talked uh, in every recruiting blog that's out there being talked about needing to appeal to mobile job seekers. And so what does that mean? It means you need to think about what your website's going to look like on particularly a smartphone. On an iPad, generally speaking, your full website is going to work just fine. But when you get to an iPad, you need to think, or excuse me, when you get to a phone, you need to think about how can I make it easy for people to interact with us. So you'll do things like simplified mobile menus. You don't see the full menu. You see just these little three lines or the word menu, which drops down to give access to more of the features of the site. You'll see toolbars. Here, there's one across the top of the site. Here, we, on these other examples, we've got them across the bottom where common actions people want to take that are always visible. So even as you're scrolling the site, call us and directions and search jobs and apply online never go away. Uh, the, the common features of the site are available in the main window of your phone. So we saw an example of this job seeker employer. We saw this example earlier when it was one of the starter sites. This is what the mobile interface for that particular website is going to look like. And the thing is with your site design to go look at it on a phone and think about how do we simplify the content? How do we simplify the navigation? How do we make it easier for people to get to the things they're really going to want to do? A lot of you know that we 
changed our job board software about a year ago to make it more mobile and SEO friendly. We redid the look, we optimized it so it would look good on any device. We added features like proximity searching and full search engine optimization for individual jobs. We created multiple ways to apply a short form and a long form. Uh, what's happened in 2014 is we're seeing really the impact of those changes. And what you're seeing now is a, a graph from Google Analytics of one of our clients who was using a posting solution that was native in their staffing software where all of the jobs were on their website but under the domain of the staffing company, excuse me, of the uh, ATS, the staffing software company, not on the domain of the staffing company. Well, we implemented our job board mid-January and what you're looking at is traffic coming to the site as soon as we simply optimize jobs. A lot of people are out there looking for good job opportunities and it costs next to nothing to optimize your jobs and make it so that you get found in more searches. This company went from uh, you know, 100 to 200 people a week coming to their website to as many as 1,000 in a day coming to their site just by optimizing their jobs. We also added many more integrations this year. So if you're using any of the software that's shown on screen, and hopefully I didn't forget anybody, so I was putting this together, uh, we now can integrate your jobs directly into our job board so that you can have an optimized interface for the jobs on your website. And uh, we are about to start uh, an improvement to our application process. Right now, a lot of the ATSs have their own custom application processes that are not very mobile friendly. We're going to be working to develop new alternatives for mobile apply so things like you're seeing on screen now, apply with Indeed, apply with LinkedIn, become very realistic options for every ATS uh, through the telephone. And whether that data goes straight into the ATS or at least goes to your recruiter, will capture the information while they're on their phone to get you more candidates and more response from the jobs that you have. All right, so let's transition now to uh, Brad's area and talk about blogging and social media. Thanks so much, David. Um, you know, th this is uh, an overview of what's new, and, and many of you are probably thinking, you know what, blogging's not new. Um, in fact, at Haley, we've been doing it now for about six years. Uh, so no, it's not, it's not new. Uh, but what is new is how Google, Bing, Yahoo index websites and how they serve up search results. And there's been a stronger emphasis on websites that serve up fresh and relevant content. And that's been increasing year after year. Uh, we see that becoming more and more important. Uh, the next uh, change on the horizon is sites that uh, engage users. So are visitors coming to your website and sharing content on social media sites? Are they uh, engaging with your company? Are they following you on, on social media sites? So um, all of this plays into your search engine optimization strategy and your online marketing strategy. And at the core of all of that to me is, is a blog. Um, we found blogging to be probably the single best way to drive traffic to your website. Uh, it increases the likelihood that somebody is going to come back to your website. If, if they come to your site and all they see is a brochure that talks about your services, uh, talks about you, there's really no reason to come back. So we need to give people a reason to come back. Blogging does that. You're providing some value. They know when they come back next time, they're going to get another piece of value. Uh, so it increases uh, return traffic. Helps improve SEO uh, with, with new content that's SEO rich. It helps drive more of that traffic. Uh, it provides social content. So as you'll see in a few slides here, it gives us the opportunity to share content socially. And that it includes traffic flow to other areas of your site. And as you look at the samples on the screen here, we're doing some interesting things with graphics. And, and we, we've just started this recently over the last year for a few of our clients. And we're creating very strong call to action banners at the bottom of blog posts. Now you could do the same thing on, on every page of your site. And every page on your site should have a strong call to action. Uh, but we're using these graphics to increase flow to other areas of the website. We're thinking about what action we want users to take and then making it as easy as possible for them to take that action. So we're offering free consultations. We're increasing the likelihood that people are going to follow us on Twitter. We're getting people to download uh, white papers. We're getting people to other areas of our site where they can place an order. They can look at the available talent we have. So look at ways to increase um, uh, traffic to other areas of your website and convert more people. 
blogging can do this, and how you blog and, and your calls to action can help uh, increase the uh, chance of a conversion. Uh, on the next few slides here, what we're going to show are uh, how blogging affects your overall website traffic. And uh, I, I've pulled a few charts, and, and what I've tried to do is pull charts from different industries, different parts of the country, different types of, of staffing and recruiting firms. And there's one consistent theme here. It's that we're consistently increasing traffic. We're getting more people to the site, they're visiting more pages, and we're getting more traffic from search engines. So we're getting more traffic from people that are searching for staffing and recruiting uh, partners in a specific industry or in a specific geographic market. This is a healthcare recruiter. They place physicians, they place very highly uh, compensated professionals. One placement fee pays for their online marketing efforts tenfold. Uh, and as you can see, it's resulting in some great, great traffic increases. On the next slide, uh, what I've done is, is pulled a some stats from a staffing and executive search firm. So the majority of this, this business is on the uh, temporary industrial uh, side of staffing, but they do some exec placement too. Uh, they've been blogging since 2009, actually 2008. And we have not seen a drop off in traffic yet. Now you do see some peaks and valleys, and, and that goes with just uh, seasonal flow and, and uh, fluctuations. But overall, it keeps trending up. We haven't seen a decre decrease in that trend up in five years. Uh, it's very powerful. Uh, the next example here, you're going to see a combination uh, on this report of the blogging efforts and the mobile and search engine optimized job board that David mentioned. Uh, back in about Q2 of 2012, we began blogging and we also implemented the search engine optimized and mobile friendly job board. And you can see the results. Now it does take a, a few months to begin to pick up steam, but when it does, it increases dramatically. That huge spike is the direct result of the job board and blogging. And then the Last uh, item I wanted to, to show here, um, clerical and light industrial uh, staffing firm. No special uh, niche, no, no core focus, uh, generalist. And over three years, they've seen consistent increases. Again, you get peaks and valleys, just like you would say in the stock market. But overall, we want to see that trend going up and up and up. Um, and we haven't plateaued yet. I mentioned earlier when talking about um, search engine optimization how important social media is. And it's becoming more and more important. So um, right at our core, right at the hub, we need, we need blogging to, to have great content, SEO rich content. But then social media gives us a channel to reach more people. It gives us a place to share that content. So social media is all about telling good stories, sharing good content. Our blog lets us house that content. And then we use social sharing to get that content in front of more people. And not just more people, but the right people. By sharing on LinkedIn groups, we can hone in on our exact target audience. It's extremely, extremely powerful. So you see an example here. Uh, at the top, at the, at the hub, is the blog. And we've created a really strong, compelling graphic on the blog to draw people in. Then we're pushing that out to LinkedIn. We're pushing it out to Google+, pushing it out to uh, Twitter. And we're carrying through a very consistent brand. This is driving more and more traffic to their website. And on the next slide here, we'll show you just what impact this had. Um, we began sharing this content in about mid-November. So um, this is uh, traffic from social media sites to this particular staffing firm's website. So again, just traffic from social. You see it's very consistent for about six months in, in 2013 there. We begin sharing content socially. We get everybody in their company to share this content. Uh, we go in and actually share it, uh, help share it for them. We post to LinkedIn groups, um, engage people on Twitter, post to Facebook. And you can see the impact that this had almost immediately. We went from maybe 80 visits a month uh, from social sites to 800 visits a month from social sites. And now, you know, 800 visits might not seem like a ton, but you have to factor in that these are 800 of the right people. 
These are people that we specifically targeted. Uh, we've spent time building a social audience. We're reaching out to them. We're connecting with the right people. So if you could get in front of 800 hiring managers or 800 extremely skilled candidates, uh, it's a great way to drive more business. And you can see specific stats here. We've seen increases across the board on all social platforms. And it's developing the content once and then adjusting the content to fish, uh, fit the social media outlet. I'll share another um, uh, case here, David, if you could go to the next slide. Um, uh, so the, the uh, case we just showed was, was a general staffing firm, um, did clerical, did light industrial. This also works uh, if you focus on a specific uh, category. Uh, in this case, IT. Uh, this organization focuses on IT staffing. They do um, IT project solutions. They do staff augmentation. They do direct hire. So we write on a variety of different topics that can appeal to that audience. And again, we're using social, we're using the blog to house this content, creating uh, really catching images, and then using social to get the message out. And you can see on the next slide, the uh, stats are reflective. Uh, we're comparing um, traffic from again, before they started social sharing uh, to after. And we started in late March, early April, and you immediately see an uptick in traffic. Uh, so the point here is that if you are blogging, congratulations, you're probably getting a great deal of traffic from uh, search engines. Uh, but take the next step. Begin sharing that content on social outlets. And you see here, LinkedIn up 400%, Facebook up 400%. On Twitter, they were getting no traffic before, and now they're getting some traction there and beginning to build an audience. It takes time, uh, but it's time well spent. Uh, you're going to see traffic continually continue to increase, and again, it's the right traffic. On our next slide, we're going to uh, show a company that um, is sharing not only blog content, uh, but they're going in and sharing other things in their organization. Um, this is a, a local staffing firm in the Des Moines area. Uh, so they're putting a face to the name. They're getting their recruiters, their staffing consultants out there. They're using Facebook to post jobs. Um, they're announcing when they go to a career fair. They're doing short video clips. They're doing a lot of fun, engaging things that don't cost a lot of money to produce, but are producing really good results. And as you can see on this uh, slide coming up, their Facebook likes from 2013 uh, compared to 2014 have completely exploded. So they were doing a little bit of, of periodic Facebook posts in early 2013. About midway through the year, they said, you know what, we really need to ramp up our efforts. Uh, Facebook is a great channel for us uh, if we can build some traction there. And just by continually posting, uh, they post maybe once a day, um, by varying content, posting fun images, posting quotes, posting open jobs, uh, they've been able to increase their organic likes. So they're not paying for these likes. These are organic likes, um, just people finding this content and, and people sharing this content. Uh, they're able to increase that exponentially. And again, we, we don't see this trailing off. We continue to see this grow and grow and grow as they continue to post good, engaging content. All right, so we talked about blogging. And, and blogging can get traffic from search engines. You can share this content socially through Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter to drive traffic back. What else can you do with it? Uh, one great thing you can do is create a newsletter out of this content. Uh, you're creating the content. It's really good content. Let's use as many different channels as we can to get it in front of as many people as we can. Uh, so you all have an ATS. You can export contacts from that ATS. Send um, email newsletters out to them. Every time you go out on a client call, Ask people for permission to add them to your email newsletter list. Get them on there. It is an extremely low-cost way to reach a huge audience. If each one of your recruiters, each one of your salespeople, each one of your staffing managers got into the habit of asking everyone they talked to for their email address so that they could send them a newsletter, you would build this massive email database that you can then leverage. You can share blog content. You can share top candidates. You can share top jobs it becomes a lead generating tool. And I know a lot of people are thinking, well, you know, I don't spend time reading email newsletters anymore. Well, people do, and we have the stats to prove it. Um, now, numbers may have decreased a little bit, but if, if you're getting a 20% open rate on your email newsletter and you're getting a good portion of those people to click through, 
you can see how that can add up into sales, into uh, better re recruiting opportunities. So there is still a ton of value in newsletters. The other thing uh, that you can look to do with your content is package your content together. And this is a uh, ebook that we're working on for Portico Staffing. It's uh, just about complete. Uh, but what we've done is, is we thought ahead about content. And instead of just writing blog posts and doing topic, uh, topics ad hoc, we, we really put together what we call a curriculum, a content curriculum. Uh, so we thought about ways that we could take our blog content and package it into a bigger, more powerful piece. And what we did is created about 10 blog posts that talked about the different steps in getting a job. So it's preparing your resume. It's seeking out references. It's how to dress. It's how to interview. So for each topic, we wrote a very engaging blog article. And then from there, we packaged all of this content together to create this outstanding ebook. So people will be able to access this ebook online. They'll be able to share this in social outlets. They'll be able to print this out and give it to candidates that walk in the door. They'll be able to print this out and take it to job fairs or career fairs and have a great takeaway piece. So there's so much you can do with this blog content once it's produced. And there's so many different channels and avenues you can take uh, to get in front of the right audience. And uh, David, kind of building on that, Maybe you can talk a little bit more about content marketing and, and Haley Mail and how to take content marketing really to the next level. Will do. And, and before I jump in, I, I want to share a quick uh, funny story that happened to me last week. I was at the California Staffing Professionals Conference, uh, enjoying a lot of good times with all of our friends uh, at CSP. And I'm in the, uh, the shuttle back to the airport from the hotel, and the shuttle's all people from the conference, and everyone's introducing one another. And... A gentleman in the row ahead of me turns around, says to the guy I'm with and me, where are you guys from? And, and the person with me says, oh, we're from Haley Marketing. And the person to his right turns around and says, do you know David Cerns? I'm like, I am David Cerns. And he reaches out and shakes my hand. And I say, hi, nice to meet you. And he goes, I get your emails all the time. The first time we had met. But he felt like he had a personal relationship with me. And the guy next to him said, you know what? I get your emails too. I never read them, but if I ever thought about a marketing company, I'd definitely call you guys first. And, and to Brad's earlier point, we've seen a decline in the open rate and click-through rate, but I haven't seen really a decline into the people who positively react as long as you're not spamming people with sales pitches. If you're sincerely adding value and providing content to people that helps them do their jobs, and that's kind of our segue to content marketing here, if you are really helping people to make their jobs easier, to make their companies more successful, to make it easier for them to hire and manage temporary employees and simplify their recruiting, they're going to think of you very highly when they outsource their staffing and recruiting needs. And it doesn't mean they're going to call you every single time, but it means you're going to be in a much better position to get their business than the other 10 or 20 or 100 staffing companies in your marketplace who aren't doing this. Now, what Brad has showed you so far was a lot of blog writing, and social sharing of content, the goal being to get more people to engage with your website. And as a lot of you know, we have a, a service that kind of takes content marketing to a different level called Haley Mail. And Haley Mail started as, actually it originally started as a ghost writing service for sales reps where we would write direct mail letters that got sent out from staffing salespeople to clients. Uh, over the years, that evolved into email campaigns. And then in 2013, we made a major change to Haley Mail to say, let's really make it a, a foundation for content marketing. Now, blogging is a great content marketing tool, but it's primarily used for SEO, writing content that's going to optimize your site, and creating articles that you can share on social media to drive web traffic. With Haley Mail, we wanted to take it a step further to create more of the really high value content that will engage staffing buyers and candidates. So last year, we really doubled the amount of content we were putting into our newsletters every month. We added bolder visuals, and what you see on screen here is on the right-hand side, it's an example of what the full email looks like for this newsletter called Strategy for Success, and the left-hand side is just a close-up of the top. We added more rich media content. We added graphics for social sharing. That's one of our new enhancements in 2014. So what we, we're doing with this content is we want you to send out an email because you want to email great content to people you're trying to do business with. 
we want you to make it easy to share that exact same content on social media. So if we have a graphic like the example that Brad showed earlier for blogging, if we have graphics that you can share that link back to this content, you'll get more engagement with the content. We're creating the eBooks like the Portico staffing example Brad shared. We're now doing that for all of our clients at least once a quarter so that there is new content to be shared. And the goal of all of this is get more people to the website, get them to take the next action, which is to contact you for information on your services. Now on screen now you're seeing one of our standard designs and we, we take our standard designs and we license them exclusively to one staffing company in each geographic market. Uh, so this is our strategies for success and Vector Technical in Cleveland, Ohio has one of our clients. They're using this newsletter in Cleveland. Uh, we have several different versions of the standard and then we also do branded, so where we can take our content put it into a design that's completely unique for your business and then still take advantage of all the social graphics we're creating and all of the content we're writing. And so if you look at the blogging service, the purpose of blogging is all about creating information that will attract people doing searches. Here with content marketing, you're creating content that's going to get specific people to take action to come to your website. So you might write a blog post on how to find a job in Kansas City that attracts a job seeker who Googles that. We might do an ebook that you would share on social media to bring people back to your website. And then with content marketing, we're usually also capturing all of their contact information when we're offering this content to download. So we can get you direct sales leads, people who will go to your jobs. And a lot of our clients will take this a step further by also turning it into a way to do skill marketing as part of their content marketing. All right, we're going to wrap up today's uh, presentation with a couple of other cool projects that we've been working on. Uh, unfortunately, because we only had an hour, we didn't have enough time to cover everything, so there's some really neat stuff we're doing in, in direct mail and collateral that I'm not going to have time to get to. But one of the, uh, the really interesting products and projects that I want to show you is the Talent Showcase. Now, skill marketing has been something the staffing industry has done for the past at least 20 years. Uh, good recruiters have always taken their best talent and picked up the phone, called employers and said, hey, we want to uh, help you fill this job opening you had or hey, we've got a phenomenal person who's exactly the right fit for your organization. I'll send the resume if you're interested. Well, over the years that telephone-based skill marketing, although it's still done today, but it has also evolved to being done uh, via email. I remember in my folks business at one point it was even done via fax. But we're taking it a step further and actually creating a look and feel for talent on your website, almost like somebody's going to Pinterest or they're going to LinkedIn and seeing profiles of your candidates. And Terra Staffing in Seattle is uh, the first client we have that's using the Talent Showcase. So they are interviewing candidates, they're taking pictures of everybody, they have a wonderful process they put together to make sure that they're not doing anything that could get them into legal trouble. Uh, and then they market that candidate, those, me, those candidates through their website so that if someone sees a picture of someone that gets their attention or a job title that gets their attention, they can drill in, read a bio of that top candidate, and then from there, one click, contact the recruiter responsible for that candidate to say, hey, I'm interested in more information on that specific individual. And the recruiter gets sales leads directly from the website about the candidates they're trying to skill market. In the first month that Terra Staffing started using the Talent Showcase, uh, three placements made. And just like the example Brad gave earlier with the client who paid for the cost of their marketing 10 times over, uh, in this particular case, that one placement was worth uh, more than 10 years of the cost of setting up the Talent Showcase done in the first month. So the, the kind of the innovative idea for your business is to think about how can we take skill marketing to a whole different level and give it that social media kind of a feel. Another thing that we're doing is really looking at the design of emails in terms of how they will display on a smartphone. So you're seeing here two graphics of what look like giant emails. Um, you might say, gee, I would never send an email that big. But what you're really seeing is something you never would see on your phone, and that's you're seeing the entire email here. So we've broken up what would have been a few paragraphs of information into very small chunks, usually one sentence at a time, where we can talk to the reader as they're using their finger to scroll 
through this particular email and drive response. And we're seeing with these very visually rich, simply worded emails, much higher levels of opens and click-throughs uh, than we were with more traditional longer format emails. Uh, thinking about the mobile view on an email, some of the things that are very important is the text has to be much bigger. Uh, because some people are getting like me, uh, and now you need to wear glasses to read your phone. And small text is really annoying, so you just delete the emails. If it's in a larger print, you're much more likely to be engaged by it. Visuals work great. If you're using an iPhone, uh, most people don't have any visuals blocked. So we, we were kind of thinking about, a couple years ago on traditional email, the need to really think about visuals, because most people did block visuals in Outlook, they are now seeing them again on their mobile device, and I believe, I don't remember the exact stat, Brad, maybe you can help me here, but I think it's, it's somewhere between 50 and 70% of emails being read on a mobile device. Yeah, I think you're dead on with that stat. So uh, while mobile traffic maybe hovers around 20, uh, about half your, half your email views are going to be on mobile devices. So it becomes uh, very important to have a mobile-friendly email design. And And... The last thing about the mobile email design is to make sure that your calls to action are big areas. So you'll see on the right-hand side where that green pen is, click for more information and register online. That whole yellow bar is really a button. So it's very easy for someone to take action uh, without accidentally pushing the wrong button and getting frustrated. And with that said, we have uh, just a few minutes left. So if there are questions, and I've got a couple that have come in, please use that question box to submit them, and we'll spend the next eight minutes answering questions. Or if uh, eight minutes isn't enough, then feel free to call us or you know, email me, and I'll be more than happy to provide responses to any of your questions. Also, if uh, you're interested or thinking about making changes to your own website, we have a great free document that we recently updated. It's called our Staffing Features uh, Staffing Website Features Checklist, and it is nine pages as an overview of all the things people ask us to do with on their staffing websites to give you ideas for your site. And you can literally go through and just check off the boxes to come up with specifications for a new website. So just email us, uh, call us, uh, use a contact form on our website, and we'll be very happy to send you a free copy of the features list. Okay, so first question that's come in. Uh, what if a company sees a candidate and looks them up on LinkedIn rather than contacting the recruiter? Uh, that was with the Talent Showcase. And the answer is our clients that are using the Talent Showcase, just like when you're skill marketing, they don't put the full candidate's information. They may have the candidate's first name, uh, but they're not going to have first and last name so that they can go to LinkedIn and go around you. And, and another question is, you know, what about any particular particular legal issues. And I'm going to tell you, that's going to vary state by state. You do want to make sure that if you're going to be skill marketing talent with pictures, it's okay in your area. I know with our client in Seattle that they talk to their attorneys and they follow a consistent process. They take pictures of every single candidate. The candidates sign a release. They do a little bit of Photoshopping to ensure a consistent presentation of the candidates. And that's why they all have that same look and feel. Uh, and then they tell the candidates, you may or may not be on our talent showcase, and they, they truly randomly pick different people to be on the talent showcase each week. All right, uh, next question. What would a good conversion rate be for a staffing site? Brad, let me turn that over to you. Sure. Um, you know, I'm not going to try to sidestep the question, but it really depends. Uh, it depends on the type of staffing you do. It depends on what your conversion actually is. So uh, thinking conversion, are you thinking of getting somebody to convert from just being a uh, general job seeker looking at information to converting over to looking at specific jobs on your site? Are you tracking... Um, uh, are, are you tracking uh, actual applications? Are, are you trying to convert uh, clients into placing an online order? So uh, I can't give you a blanket, you know, 20% conversion rate, uh, but it really depends on what action you want to take. Um, if it's uh, getting an, uh, an application, it's really going to depend on um, how many jobs you have on your site. I will say that the more open positions you have, the higher conversion rate of a candidate coming there to, to, to applying, um, so that's going to be higher. Um, so, it, it, you know, unfortunately, it, it does depend on your site and what the um, uh, conversion is. I, I will say, though, that I like the question because you should be tracking conversions. You should be setting up things like goals in Google Analytics. You should be looking at reports to figure out which page on your site has the highest exit rate. So um, what I would suggest doing is, is getting a baseline 
um, looking at your conversion rate and, and getting a baseline. And then look for ways to improve your site by bigger calls to action, stronger calls to action, um, including more ways for people to get to the goal conversion point. Uh, and then um, testing those changes to see if your conversion rates increase. Um, after the call, if, if you have a specific um, uh, question and, and want to reach out to me directly, please do so. I'd be happy to take a look at it uh, with you together. Okay, good. Uh, next question, uh, is someone had a specific question about the talent network. Is it something we license to other staffing firms? Uh, yes, it is. It's actually, we, we built it in conjunction with um, a couple of our clients, uh, and the goal was to actually create it into a product that for a very, very low cost, uh, any staffing firm could add to their website. Uh, and speaking of questions about products, somebody else, if we have an integrated job board application on Facebook. Um, and I'll tell you, our, our Facebook view of the world has kind of been changing a lot over the recent year uh, to year and a half. When we first started doing a lot of work with Facebook, we were working on building uh, a Facebook within, the, within a company page, building our job board out so that you could have the way, a way to search jobs from within Facebook. We didn't create a separate native app in Facebook. We were just using our straight up job board software and using uh, Facebook's programming language to make that work. And we found that uh, almost no one used it. So we have not been pursuing more aggressive building an app on Facebook. And now with some of the changes that people have, that Facebook has been making, the majority of content that's people are sharing, all businesses are sharing, is not being seen by their audience. And it's, it's less than 10% now, and I believe it's trending down. And I've seen some projections that it's going to be as low as 1% because Facebook wants you sponsoring content because they want advertising revenues. So we're, we're not pursuing a Facebook app. We still can do things to put jobs on Facebook. Our job board does have the ability to have an RSS feed that we can feed jobs to Facebook. But even with that, we find the best results on Facebook come when people share content in small doses when it comes to jobs, maybe once or twice a week, but they focus on engaging their audience to get likes and followers to a fairly significant level based on the quality of the information, and then you can post the jobs. Brad, maybe there's a, a good example. I know a couple of clients who get very good Facebook results, and a lot who don't simply because of the changes Facebook's been making. Maybe you can add to my thoughts. Sure thing. Uh, David, what you were mentioning, uh, Facebook refers to as something called edge rank. So just like search engines uh, who have a, an algorithm for whether or not your website ranks on, on page one, Facebook use some, uses something similar. So let's say you have a 1,000 people that like your page on, on Facebook and you share a piece of content. Maybe only 100 people are going to see that piece of content in their news feed. And Facebook's edge rank algorithm depends on a number of factors. Um, but most importantly is how people are engaging with the content that you are posting. So if you're just inundating people with uh, an automatic job feed and you're posting job after job after job after job, that's going to negatively impact your edge rank, uh, which means that when you do post something, less and less people are going to actually see that. Uh, so instead of posting quantity, uh, I would post quality. So look at Facebook's insights. Uh, look for when your audience is on Facebook. Uh, look at the types of content that people are engaging with. And when I say engaging, it's people liking the content, it's people sharing the content, commenting on the content, and use all of that information to make better decisions on what you're going to post going forward. If you can post content that more people engage with, it's going to get in front of more people. If it gets in front of more people, more people are going to engage with it. And you can see how that can improve your edge rank and improve your visibility. The other thing you can do, uh, which, which David mentioned, is use Facebook's advertising platform as a way to reach your target audience. And this is a great way to recruit. You, uh, we're doing this for, for several of our clients, uh, especially in high skill, high demand areas where uh, we're, we're singling out people in a specific geographic market or in a specific skill area uh, like a, a specialized programming language. And people put all that information in their profile so you can have jobs that show up in people's Facebook feed that drive traffic back to your website and it's very cost effective to do that. So there are a bunch of different ways to use Facebook to, to drive more traffic. 
Excellent. And guys, we are just at 3 o'clock. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to end today's webinar, um, but we won't end taking the questions. So if there are more questions that pop up, please don't be shy. You can contact me, dcerns at haleymarketing.com. You can contact Brad B. Smith uh, at haleymarketing.com or give us a call if you'd like a question answered or you want a copy of that checklist. And to wrap things up, uh, please join us again next month for our Lunch with Haley webinar where we're going to be discussing recruiting optimization. Everybody is seeing a tightening in the candidate market, so we're going to talk about techniques for getting more response to your website, to your jobs from active job seekers. So we're not going to really talk about the, how to ferret out the passive candidates. We're going to assume you've got great recruiting skills to dig those people up, but we want to get more response from people who are actively looking for work. And we're going to show you some tricks uh, and techniques to get as many candidates as possible to apply to your jobs. So again, uh, Kelly and Brad, thank you both very much. And to everyone on today's call, thank you as well. I hope you enjoyed today's Lunch with Haley.